Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today we will go through the guideline by the British Society for Hematology on the laboratory diagnosis of iron deficiency, focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. A link to it is in the episode description. In the coming episodes, I will also cover the recommendations on functional iron deficiency and the assessment of raised ferritin. So stay tuned for those. Right, let's jump into it. The British Society for Hematology produces good practice papers to recommend good practice in areas where there's limited evidence, but there's a degree of consensus and it is likely to be beneficial to patient care. The laboratory diagnosis of iron deficiency is difficult because iron homeostasis is dynamic and no single test can provide an accurate assessment of iron absorption, transport, storage and utilization. Iron metabolism in adults and children can be considered equivalent and these recommendations are applicable to both pediatric and adult practice, but it does not include pregnancy. Let's start by saying that iron deficiency is the most common cause of anemia worldwide. In the UK, the prevalence of iron deficiency anemia can go up to 6% depending on age and sex, with higher rates in certain groups like menstruating women and those aged over 85 years. The prevalence of iron deficiency without anemia, however, is not well documented. In this episode, we're just focusing on the laboratory assessment of iron status and not the full guidance on iron deficiency anemia, which requires a detailed history, clinical examination, and the review of, for example, national gastrointestinal and gynecology guidelines, as well as other local pathways. The British Society for Hematology has suggested an algorithm for the laboratory investigation of iron deficiency anemia, which we will review at the end. But first, let's look at the different laboratory parameters that we will need to consider. As you may already be aware of, the main diagnostic tests in iron deficiency anemia are a full blood count and ferritin. So let's now start with the red cell parameters in a full blood count. Anemia will be confirmed if hemoglobin or Hb is below the reference range but Hb alone does not indicate iron status and at population levels there's considerable overlap in Hb levels between iron replete and iron deficient people. Iron deficiency is typically associated with microcytic hypochromic anemia, but low MCV, MCH or MCHC can also appear in other conditions, especially the thalassemias. Interestingly, MCV can be normal in up to 40% of iron deficient patients and also in cases of mixed hematinic deficiency. There are other more advanced parameters like percentage of hypochromic cells and reticulocyte mean hemoglobin content, which can help evaluate iron deficiency further. Given that erythrocytes contain about half of the body's iron at any one time, a high percentage of hypochromic cells or low reticulocyte Hb content without thalassemia suggests that iron is not adequately reaching newly formed red cells, which could be due to iron deficiency or iron restriction. Morphological changes also appear in iron deficiency and generally anisocytosis precedes hyperchromia and microcytosis, but blood cell morphology is not diagnostic. So in summary, in respect of full blood counts, it is recommended that if thalassemia is not present, any NCV, NCH or MCHC result, which is below normal, could suggest iron deficiency. On the other hand, normal red cell indices do not exclude iron deficiency as a cause of anemia. So further investigations may still be required if there's high clinical suspicion. Mean reticulocyte Hb content of below 29 picograms can support the diagnosis of iron deficiency if initial tests are inconclusive and finally, although not diagnostic, inspection of peripheral blood film should be performed when the diagnosis is unclear. Let's now move on to ferritin. Ferritin reflects iron stores and levels below 15 micrograms per litre strongly suggest iron deficiency. Levels up to 30 micrograms per litre can still be consistent with deficiency, but are less specific. Ferritin acts as an acute phase protein, 
meaning that it rises with inflammation, kidney disease, liver disease, and malignancy. And because of this, interpreting ferritin in inflammatory states can be challenging. Formulas to create ferritin with CRP or ESR have been proposed, but the evidence is not robust enough for clinical use. So, in summary, the recommendations are that, in children over 5 and adults, a ferritin of below 15 micrograms per litre is indicative of iron deficiency. For children under 5, the threshold is a ferritin of below 12 micrograms per litre. However, a ferritin level within the normal range does not exclude iron deficiency if there is inflammation or chronic disease, and further investigation is often needed. And this is where iron studies come into play. They should not be done routinely, but they should be considered when full blood count shows microcytic or hyperchromic anemia. Ferritin is borderline or normal, but the suspicion of iron deficiency, for example, in chronic inflammation, or there is a need to differentiate iron deficiency from other causes of anemia, like for example thalassemia. Iron studies include primarily serum iron, total iron binding capacity or TIPC, and transferrin saturation. Let's break this down. Serum iron only measures ferric iron bound to transferrin, not the iron in hemoglobin. Someone with iron deficiency will usually exhibit a low concentration of serum iron, but it is a dynamic parameter with well-established day-to-day variability. Consequently, measuring serum iron in isolation is not helpful, but its measurement is required to allow calculation of percentage transferrin saturation. On the other hand, TIPC and transferrin rise in iron deficiency. Transferrin is a negative acute phase protein, so its concentration may be reduced in inflammation. Although TIPC and transferrin have less variability than serum iron, their specificity remains poor, so they're not really that useful for diagnostic purposes. Finally, transferrin saturation is calculated as the ratio of serum iron to TIPC or transferrin. It reflects how much transferrin is carrying iron, but like serum iron, its variable and diurnal fluctuations can be up to 70%. Also, conditions like malnutrition and chronic illness affect its accuracy. A diagnostic threshold for transferrin saturation has not been well established, but it has been suggested a target of below 16% as a screening threshold. So in summary, serum iron, TIPC and transferrin should not be used alone in diagnosing iron deficiency, but a transferrin saturation below 16% can support the diagnosis if other tests are inconclusive. As promised, let's now look at the algorithm proposed in this paper by the British Society for Hematology. The first line tests for the investigation of iron deficiency anemia are a full blood count, ferritin and CRP. Based on the results, we can have three main scenarios. The simplest one is when hemoglobin is normal and no anemia is identified. In these cases, if ferritin is below 15, we should still suspect iron deficiency and investigations into the cause of the iron deficiency may still be required. The other two scenarios is when there is anemia. And according to WHO criteria, anemia is when hemoglobin is below 130 in adult males, below 120 in non-pregnant females, and below the age and gender-specific reference range in children. So, if there is anemia but no signs of inflammation, that is, CRP is normal, but ferritin is below 15, then this is a case of iron deficiency anemia. However, if ferritin is 15 or higher, then iron deficiency is unlikely and we should consider other causes of anemia. If there is anemia but also signs of acute or chronic inflammation, that is, when the CRP is high, if ferritin is below 15, we should also regard this as iron deficiency anemia. If ferritin is higher than 150, then iron deficiency is unlikely and we should consider other causes of anemia. 
but a ferry tin is between 15 and 150 in the context of a high CRP. Then further tests will be required, including a blood film and iron studies. Blood film morphology will help us exclude alternative diagnoses, and we're likely to consider a diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia if transferrin saturation is below 16% or mean reticulocyte hemoglobin content is less than 29 picograms. So that is it, a review of the laboratory investigations of iron deficiency. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice, but only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.